Welcome back everyone. In the previous video, which if you didn't watch, you should go back to, we figured out how to draw a line from the first point to every other point in the polygon. Now, in this video, we want to figure out an efficient way of combining all this into an abstracted block. So I'm going to have to think very carefully. Let's look for some repetition first so we can uh, try to figure this out. So before I go on to number five, which is to go on to the next point and do a line to every other one, I want to think about what this is doing and I want to put this inside of a block to make it a little bit easier to figure out. I'm noticing that I am going back to the first item every single time. And if I think into the future, I'm going to have to do that for every single point. I'm going to have to designate that point as like the main point or the main starting point before I draw all my lines. And I have to keep changing that main starting point to go from item one to item two to item three to item four to item five. Okay, so maybe I can store that as the main starting point for a line drawing session. So let me uh, drag all of this down and let me try to code that up a little bit. So what I want to do is I want to go to the starting location. So let's think, how can we do that? Um, we are going to have to take, we're going to have to store this in a variable. So let's store this inside of a variable. Let's create a variable and call it the uh, starting point in question. Maybe I'll just call it starting point and starting point. Uh, it must be initialized just like we saw in the previous video. We have to initialize it to an empty list. And now what I want to do is I want to set this starting point to the first item in polygon points. And later on, it's going to cycle through all of the polygon points and that those are going to become the new starting points, but I'm just going to hard code it for now. So once it's initialized, I'm going to set it. I'm going to set starting point equal to the first item, item one of polygon points. And later on, I'm going to figure out a way to have this change every single time. So it'll go from item one to item two to item three to item four as the new starting points. Okay, now what is happening here? We go from the starting point to the second point. Okay, so let's see. So we have to go to, let me bring over the go to block. We have to go to the starting point. So X and Y coordinates of the starting point. Let me bring those in the X coordinate and the Y coordinate of starting point of starting point. Okay. And then what I do is I go to the next point. So I go to item two, let's say. Okay. So let's see before I do anything. Okay, I could hard code this, but then I'm going to end up in the same spot that I'm in right now. Let's use the for each block. Let's use the for each um, to go from the starting point to the next point. Uh, let's see. So starting point is not going to change here, but let's go to the next location. So let's go to the next item of polygon points. So I can bring polygon points instead of hard coding it here. Let's put the item and go through each item. Let's see and go through each item uh, one by one. Wow. So this is a little tricky. Let's actually, I think this will work, but let's uh, recap. Actually, I have to lift up my pen and put it down and stuff. Let me lift up my pen and I want to put it down before I start moving. So I want to go to pen, pen down. And then once it goes to the next location, it's going to do a pen up. Okay. So let me go through what this is doing. What we're first doing, I have to first connect it to this. Okay. I am setting a starting point, which is going to be just a point that I'm going to store somewhere else as an empty list. Then I'm going to set it equal to the first item of polygon points. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to that first item or that starting point and then go to the first item. So actually the first time around, it's going to stay in place. Then since the for each block will continue until it hits all of them, all of the items, then it's going to go back to the starting point and then it's going to go to item two. So the X coordinate of the second item, because that's the one that we're at right now, right? Then we're going to go back 
to the first item or the starting point and then go to the third item. I think this will work. I think this is like the same code that we had before, but in a much more efficient um, format. Let me get rid of all this extra stuff and let me see if this works. So I'm going to clear the stage and I'm going to run it. Uh, a moment of truth here. I run it and this is actually kind of perfect, almost perfect actually, because it didn't go back to the starting point after it finished everything. So I guess what I got to do is I got to bring back this, I got to put this underneath the for each block so that it goes back to the first uh, point, the starting point. Let me actually run it again. And it's perfect. It looks like it goes back right, right back to the starting point, which is exactly what I wanted. Now, if I connect this to the polygon block, it actually should work for the polygon, for the five-sided polygon. So there we go. We just drew a part of the mandala. It actually works, and I'm somewhat surprised, somewhat uh, somewhat happy right now. <laughs> now, what I got to figure out is a way to change the starting points. So instead of just using 0, 0 or the first item as the starting point every single time, you'll notice that we don't have any lines going from point 2 to point four to point five, and there's not any going from two to three or two to one here. So um, yeah, so we gotta we gotta figure out a way to do this to cycle through the points and recycle the starting point or reset the starting point. And that's actually what I want to do. I want to put all of this inside of another for each block. Now, is that too tricky for you guys to understand? Let me think. Nope, let's try it. <laughs> let's use a for each block outside of our first one. And so we want to, let's think, we want to set the starting point before we start doing any drawing or anything. We want to set the starting point to that item. And I think that'll work because each item of polygon points is going to be, yeah, we're going to do this first. And then we're going to cycle through all of this. So we just nested the for each block inside of another for each block. And I'm really nervous because I don't know if this is going to work. And if it doesn't, it's okay. We'll, we'll debug it. So um, I just want to like quickly go through again what it's doing. We are drawing the polygon. We're setting the starting point to, uh, to this empty list. So we're kind of initializing it there. Then what I'm doing is I'm um, for each item of polygon points. So right now we're looking at the first item. We're going to set the starting point to the first item. Oh my gosh, I just clicked it by accident and it works. It drew the entire mandala. But let me kind of go back and kind of explain what is going on here. We are setting the starting point to the item. And now for every single item in polygon points, we're drawing a line from one to the other. Okay, so after it completes all of the points from, let's say, item one, then it becomes, it resets starting point to item two. So now this item is equal to item two, and it starts at item two. That's the new starting point. So it's going to go to item two. It's going to draw a line to, the next, to item one, from item two to item two, from item two to item three, and from item uh, two to item four, to item two to item five. And then it's going to cycle back and go to the starting point, it's going to reset the new starting point to be item three. So now every time it does this, it's going to go from item three to item one, item three to item two, item three to item three. And I hope you guys are able to follow along with that because that's really tricky. Okay. Now, will this work if we start changing the number of sides in the polygon? Let's, let's test it out. Let's try a six sided polygon. Um, when I run it, it does. It looks like it works. And you guys can see the starting point was set to negative 40, negative 90. Um, I think if I move the sprite around, I clear the stage. Wherever the sprite is, that's going to be set as the starting point. Now, the problem with our code as it is, is that it does work. It does draw the mandala, but it's kind of like drawing lines over lines that already exist. So we're doing a lot of repetition. And you'll notice that if I clear it and I draw it, you'll see that it keeps drawing even after it's drawn the entire mandala. And that's because it's kind of like redrawing a lot of uh, lines. But I don't think we should worry about it too much, but you can go a little bit crazy and try to figure out how to make it really efficient and not like retrace any of the lines. All right. I think that that's it. Let me try a 10-sided polygon. 
10 sided. Let me try changing the side length to 80. I'm going to move the mandala, or sorry, I'm going to move the sprite up here. And when I run it, it draws the mandala. It's not all fitting on the, on the stage. Let me see if I could actually move this over. Oh no, it doesn't change anything, but it is drawing the mandala. And that's how you do it. <laughs> um, if this nesting of for each blocks is a little tricky, there is another way to do this. We could use a four block, but I'll leave it up to you guys to figure it out if you really want to. Okay, now I've shown you guys how to draw a mandala, how to kind of like work through it. This is a really tricky video. I, I don't know if I like it because I kind of like did it on the fly. So I know I made a lot of mistakes and I was kind of like thinking in between uh, as I was speaking and it doesn't come out like fluidly. It doesn't look perfect, but I think you guys will appreciate kind of the, this raw format, seeing me think through the problem and trying to figure it out on the fly. If this, uh, if this video was a little bit too confusing, just let me know in the comments below and I can maybe respond to each comment and help you guys out. All right, I will uh, see you guys in lab three of unit two. Bye for now.